we're gonna have a quick video today that doesn't involve running combine, although the combine's gonna be in it. Um, got to get things staged and ready to go for this weekend. Um, elevators obviously closed. They were closing early today for Christmas. They're off all weekend and Monday for Christmas. So, um, looks like the weather's gonna be on my side for the weekend, kinda. So I got a couple semis lined up that I can get filled, but we can't get them in at my uncle's, um, and you'll see why. But I've had se I've had a semi at my uncle's before when I had weed out there. You can get in and out just fine if the ground's dry, and the ground's not dry, and the driveway's too narrow to get backed in off. I mean, you could probably get a semi backed in off the road but there's concrete embutments on either side of the driveway that in case a culvert and i'd really hate for somebody to be backing in there and catch a rim on one of those things and burst a tire or bend the rim or it's just easier and even if you got a semi in the driveway there wouldn't be enough room for the semi and a cart to load it so um what we're gonna do is set this auger up and my thought was to kind of get it in the yard here kind of kinney corner um sticking out over the driveway so that we could back in with the grain trucks here have a semi parked there so that we got room to pull back and forth and load the semi and use our trucks to load the semi um so this is my auger that i bought anybody that's been around that long i bought this thing a couple springs ago um at an auction i wasn't even looking for an auger but 125 bucks for an eight inch I don't even know how long that thing is. What are those? Probably four foot in between the bearings. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 40, probably 45 foot maybe. I'm assuming that those are four. Man, I bet those are five foot. I bet that's five foot. I'd have to throw a tape measure on it. Man, no, there ain't no way that's five foot. They're probably four. I bet that's four. Anyhow, somewhere like a 45 foot auger. And somebody put a little bit of money into it before they quit using it because it's got brand new uptake flighting in it. They put a brand new carrier bushing down here. They put a new stub shaft in it. They had put a new spinner tube on it. Somebody had been in the gearbox and it had new bearings in it. Or new bearings and seals in it but when they did it whoever put it back together didn't set the backlash in this front bearing right and the shaft was in there sloshing or bouncing back and forth and so it's gonna need it took the seal out and the bearings are kind of chafed chafed up from hammering but for what i need to do it'll run for now because i took the, i took the gearbox apart and changed the oil in it and stuff um so but it does run good and it was locked up when I got it, but I got everything freed up. So hopefully it works. I, I've had it running with, I've had it running empty. So I'm gonna run it with the 1800. The 77 would probably handle it just fine, but since it's all rusty, hadn't been used in God knows how long, um, I'd just rather have an excessive amount of horsepower on it and we'll just feed it slow until everything gets shined up and slicked up and working good. And the only other thing that's and about it was the sprot the drive sprockets up top here have seen better days but uh i got measurements off of them to get new ones coming and they, they should run for what i gotta do but they'll need replaced and it is a it's a it's a hutchinson auger so it's a good auger but anyway i figure i got it and i might as well use it and then i spent all morning because i didn't have a hopper for it so I spent all morning running around. I had to go to the John Deere dealer anyhow. So I saw or I asked if they had any and they don't carry anything like this. And I went to TSC, they don't have anything. Royal King didn't have anything. Turns out one of my boss's friends had one for sale for 150 bucks, which this style is like 300 and 350 and some change brand new anyhow. And it's not in bad shape. So I didn't initial, I didn't really want this style 
but this is a bit there because there's like two different sizes of these and this is the big one and i was like okay it ain't gonna clean out for shit really but it gives you a lot bigger target to hit with the truck so i can probably deal with having to clean it out for the convenience of having a bigger hole to hit than the v-shaped trough but i spent all morning chasing trying to find one of those and ended up finding one well i ended up having somebody find one for me so anyhow um that's where we're at so we got to get this set up we're gonna get the combine moved and hopefully still have enough daylight i gotta go up to my bosses and grab the 4450 in the grain cart because i'm gonna use that in lieu of our cart because that's a 450 bushel cart this is gonna make life a lot easier um i wish the pto worked on the 4150 because i'd put the grain cart behind that but the pto i mean it doesn't stop turning so it might slip once you put it either way it doesn't it doesn't work but let's get this thing spun around If you're filling the front of the trailer, that'd probably put the back right in here somewhere. I don't think that would be too hard to get pulled back up on level. Especially if you fill the front first and the back last so that the weight's on the truck when you're... And then you could back around right there with our trucks have the tractor parked here it'd be nice to get it ahead a little further but then you're in the yard and if you put it at a steeper angle to get that on the driveway and then the tractors are going to start getting close to the trailer I think that'll work. Because how many pace this off real quick? Because you figure, I mean, if I if they don't bring me that super hopper, it would make things a little easier too. Because that one's a full 53 foot, I think. So 
So from here, pace it off. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which should be, what, 45 foot? I would think that would be plenty. I think. I'm gonna shuffle it once and see if I can make something I like a little better maybe okay I moved it a little bit at, at pacing it off I gained about three foot that way so I think that'll work for what we're doing it ain't uh, it ain't perfect by any means but this is about what it's gonna look like so that should do the trick Hopefully it moves corn. Like I say, we've never tried it before, but if not, I know where there's a couple other ones that I could borrow for the job, but honestly, I think this long one's gonna work kind of nice just because of the lack of room we have to work with. So this is where a pad right here would be nice so you didn't have to worry about sinking trucks or anything and you can just stick it straight parallel to the, or perpendicular to the driveway and not have to do any of this stuff but anyhow that should take care of this and before it goes back to my house when we're done with it i am definitely taking this hitch and making it a full clevis because what the heck were they like what good is this and there's no weld on it like there ever was a clevis on it and it got broke off it's always just been a flat one hole like what are you supposed to do with that it's scary pulling it because that thing bounces one time and the hit or your draw bar comes up off the hitch of the truck and then you got the pin like through there all cockeyed and there's that much of a gap and it just it's i don't know why every auger i've ever been around it seems like other than like newer swing aways and stuff that are they have to have a pretty massive draw bar on them just because the auger's so damn heavy any of these older simple straight through no frills augers i've ever been around it always seems like them hitches are an afterthought and it's like oh hey we got to have a way to move this what's the cheapest simplest way we can so i'm going to take this thing and actually weld a, another dork on the bottom of it with a gusset here so that you're actually you got a regular hitch clevis so anyhow that's this now we can uh Probably go get the combine move once dad gets freed up. All right, we're over here to grab the combine. I'm not going to show loading it up because we're loading it at a neighbor's place and it's not my place to show all of their stuff on video. So, but we'll get her fired up. enough out it should start off with a manifold heater I've got to the point where if it's been frosty outside I just shoot it with ether because it's a lot less cranking but it's not it's mid 40s so it should start okay Maybe. <sighs> I should have shot it with ether. Now that I use the manifold heater, I'm committed. I don't want to blow the intake. Cooperate for me, darling. There she goes. All right, there's that. And we're back on the road. This is a short run. We just got to go down the highway, or cross the highway, go down a little bit, and at my uncle's so get 
from where I did that custom work to here, that was the long one. That one was a little stressful, but it worked out okay. It wouldn't be so bad if the mover wasn't so wide. That's that's a bigger issue than even the height of the width. But unless I end up picking up more custom work, which I wasn't... I had initially thought about going and trying to drum some more up, but the later this gets, the more I'm tired of sitting in a combine, so I just really want to get my stuff done and be done. So we should only have one more move to make after this, and that's to get from my uncle's back to mom and dad's to get the tracks off and put the tires back on.